Now, years of political instability has left the archipelago of islands that make up the Comoros struggling to climb out of poverty. But the government says the country still has enormous investment potential. It now plans to take advantage of its beaches, untapped energy resources, and a young population to attract much-needed capital. We sat down with the country's president, Azali Asumani, to find out his plans for the nation. Now, the country's economic outlook has improved given uh, some reforms that we've seen in infrastructure, especially in the power sector. Now, since you assumed office, what have been some of your key achievements uh, and what are some of the key sectors uh, that you focused on? We have a number of ambitious plans, but we have only achieved a few. We came into quite a precarious situation where there was really not much in the way of energy or government functions. Our biggest setback was power. Over one year, we worked towards fixing this, opting for thermal energy. Now we are working on stabilizing energy. This is our most important and difficult challenge. We've had a lot of potential to generate energy using all our resources, whether hydroelectric on the island of Anjun, geothermal from our Kaltala volcano, or the sand and wind that covers all the islands. We have been working on stabilizing power using renewable source of energy. We have been in talks with many organizations and countries, such as the United Arab Emirates, to help us solve this. So we are going to try to use that energy to boost other infrastructure and sectors, such as tourism, that will help in moving the country closer towards its vision 2030. But what is your strategy to raise money for some of these reforms? Will it uh, be through your budget or through partnerships? What we did first was to rebuild a relationship of trust with our private sector. Because we do not have resources like oil, it's our private sector that will finance our projects. So we had to protect them, putting a system in place where government and private sector could negotiate together. With regards to infrastructure projects, we have revived engagements with organizations like the African Development Banks and states like Saudi Arabia, and we are renewing their confidence in the country so that they can help us finance projects in the utility sector. In June, we started projects on two islands funded by the two, and there are more in the pipeline. Give us a sense of the country's relationship with China. Now, following the FOCAC meeting, which took place this year, how do you plan to further cooperation with the country and, of course, tap into that 60 billion U.S. dollars that President Xi pledged for Africa? We have a beautiful relationship both on bilateral and multilateral level. We have not yet taken advantage of the $60 billion, but because the money is targeted at the whole continent, we plan to get some benefits. And that is where bilateral cooperation comes in. We are working on coming up with projects here that China can fund. China has already financed projects in malaria prevention. They finance the airport and are financing a new stadium as well as our national assembly. So we have a lot of projects with China already in the works. The good thing about China is that they have been our most visible investors.